<sighs> Welcome to Desta! Hi, Mama Jean! Today we're gonna talk about riots in the Netherlands. With Shell. Let's go! Okay. So, Shell. Let's talk about riots in Netherlands. What's, what's happening, Shell, with those riots? Mm. Not too much. Um, recently, we had the curfew installed, so after nine o'clock, you're not allowed in the street unless you have a valid reason. And basically, that means that a lot of people are not allowed in the streets. Um, this normally shouldn't be a problem, in my opinion, but apparently, a lot of people got bored over the summer, so they decided to be like, "We had enough, and we can like tear down some cars and stores and make a riot." Everyone is condemning them. Keep in mind, though, the proportion of people in the streets do not reflect the average Dutch person. This is a category mm -hmm. of very bored individuals that, uh, yeah, had enough of all the bullshit. If you were the president of Netherlands, what would you do to fix the to to deal and to prevent those riots? Now, first of all, we do not have a president. We have a minister president. Since we are a yeah. royalty. That guy. <laughs> but yeah, if, if I would be in charge. Uh, how to prevent it? I don't think you can prevent this. A short term, you can't solve this. This is education. The second thing is most of these people are riled up thanks to Facebook and social media. They, are, they don't watch the news. They don't read the newspapers. They just hear what their friends say. It's hearsay on hearsay. And they just going to go like, well, this is bullshit. Let's riot. And I'm like... It really, mm. and that pisses me off a bit. Maybe the government should do more control on social media, but that's also something in a democratic country you, you don't want. So, yeah, it's a bit problematic. But I think, in general, education would be the way to prevent it. This riot, uh, where, where, yeah. where did it happen? Well, when people talk about the Netherlands, most people think Amsterdam or Rotterdam, but uh, no, it actually happened all the way in the south, in the uh, more rural areas. Well, it's still a big city, but it's uh, not one of the major big cities. And also a place called Turk, that's like the middle oh, yeah. of nowhere. Yeah, Turk, U-R-K. It's a really small town in the middle of nowhere. They have quite a history, and they are well known for thinking slightly different than the rest of the Dutch people. Mm. So, yeah, it's uh, for a lot of Dutch people, it's uh, far away from home or far away from their bed situation. It happens in areas, but um, I just read the report about it and I just note that uh, even though it happened far away, lots of people throughout the country went to that place. Apparently, they promoted it on Facebook to come and quote marks, demonstrate. And uh, mm. they actually put people on fast trial, uh, on fast track trial. That means you get convicted within a couple of days. And uh, from what I heard, most of them are convicted by now. And of mm. course, uh, <laughs> what the, most people don't read about is that it means that their stuff has been confiscated, their cars, their bank accounts. Uh, once the Dutch law system goes into effect, uh, it's not fun to be caught between a hard, uh, rock and a hard place. So, yeah. But that's basically what happens. It's not the major cities where the riots break out. It's usually the more rural, slower, small area compared to the rest of the world. Most Dutch people will still say it's a big <laughs> city. Kinda. Who were the rioters in the, in the Netherlands? Mostly people not agreeing with the current policy in place. I don't know anyone personally, and if I would know them personally, I would say I do not want to know them. <laughs> They're usually people who are, well, in Dutch, we have a word for those kind of people, uh, uh, wappies or uh, tokies. Toki is an, actually, it's a family name. It became very famous in Dutch television, and it's a TV show about people having very, uh, how do I say that, rude behavior. 
and ah. it was plastered all over Dutch television. And it became really popular because they were so anti-socially or not anti-socially, but acting different than the average Dutch person. And that actually became a nickname for people who are acting outside the average behavior, to put it politely. You probably have to kind of censor it, but they are the scum of the earth, in my okay. opinion. How did it happen? Well, I told you before, the Facebook thingy advertised for a demonstration event. Uh, several people were organizing a <clears throat> demonstration. It got all canceled by the judge. The judge said, like, no, 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 not allowed. You do not have a permit to have a demonstration. And most of these organizations have said, okay, we're going to cancel the demonstration. But still on Facebook, many people said they would come and they showed up. So you mm. got a whole bunch of people with nothing to do. That's usually a recipe for trouble. Not the first time, to be honest. But wasn't the Netherlands the country where there were no crimes? Yeah. No, 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 no. The Netherlands has an average crime rate like the rest of Europe. Yeah, you told me like because they they behave like Japanese, maybe. They behave because in Japanese Japan, there is in certain no crime. aspects. But crime is still a thing. I mean, it happens. I mean, if you want to have a crime-free country, you have to look at Japan. Um, <clears throat> of course, many Japanese will say that there is plenty of crime in Japan. They're not wrong, but to their standards. If you would compare Japanese standards to European standards, then the crime rates in Europe are much higher than in Japan. Although that's also a different thing is what you consider crime. It's a bit hard. Well, um, stealing a candy from a kid is a, is a crime. Oh no, well, for example, stealing a bicycle. Uh, stealing a bicycle in the Netherlands is a very common crime. There are mm. more bicycles than people, so bicycles get stolen a fuck them. And in Japan, uh, there are several laws in place that if you ride a bicycle in Japan, you need to prove that the bicycle belongs to you. So the reason to steal a bicycle in Japan is like, well, I do not have a permit to prove that this bicycle belongs to me. So if I get pulled over by the police, I'm going to get arrested because I have a bike without a permit. But in the Netherlands, mm. you get pulled over by a couple never question if the bike belongs to you, yes or no, unless he has evidence to think otherwise. But if you ride a stolen bike in the Netherlands and nobody knows that the bike is stolen, nobody will find out. You do not need a permit to ride a bicycle in Ireland. There's no paperwork involved in ownership. So mm, on that fun. point, bike stealing is very high in the Netherlands. So if a Japanese person would say like, oh, bikes in Japan get stolen all the time. I'm like, sure, but not as many times as it's stolen in the Netherlands. But on the other hand, there's some things that might happen a lot in Japan that don't happen in the Netherlands because in the Netherlands that's not an issue or that people don't talk about or we do not have an issue with. I do not know all these examples, but there probably is going to be plenty. So, but in terms of that, um, the only thing that I would say that the Japanese and the Dutch culture is compatible with each other is the certain level of tolerance that the Netherlands has towards Japanese people. The certain things have similarities in Japanese culture. For example, the usage of public transportation is very high among Dutch people. So for a Japanese person, well, on average, easy to go to the Netherlands. They do not need a driver's license to get around from point A to point B. It might not be as perfect as in Japan, but it's still in place. If a Japanese person, for example, moved to America, he would get into serious issues because if you do not have a driver's license in America, you're not going to get around. You might be able to travel around a big city like New York with public transport. Mm -hmm. It's not going to be at the same level they are used to in Japan. And on that part, I think the Netherlands is very compatible with Japanese uh, citizens. Yeah. That's one of the things. Also, Dutch people like bureaucracy. The Japanese also like bureaucracy. For example, in the Netherlands, if you want to um, renovate your house, you need a permit. So many of these logical steps, the Japanese are probably going to think like, oh, I might need a permit for that. In the Netherlands, yeah, you're probably going to need a permit for that. And in other countries like Greece, that's totally not an issue. You want to renovate your house? Sure, go ahead. And if you really need a permit, you just go to the local government and bribe some official and say, hey, here's $10,000. Can I please have the permit so you don't kind of bother me with any stupid questions about renovating my house? And the guy's like, fine, come over next week for dinner. 
that's impossible in the Netherlands. And that's impossible in Japan. On that part, it's the same. Also, uh, in the Netherlands, we have a very high uh, dependency on uh, same-day delivery or next-day delivery. If you order wow. something online, it's usually guaranteed to get it the next day. And mm. in Tokyo, if you order something online, you usually get it within 24 hours. Those are also very similar things. I heard Japanese people going to the UK, the United Kingdom, and they ordered mm. something of Amazon because they're used to Amazon in Japan. And they were like, oh, next day delivery. Yeah, that would be nice. And then they're waiting three or four or five days for their package. And they go like, what the hell is this? Where's my next day delivery? Well, sadly, delivery systems in the UK are not as robust as in the Netherlands and in Japan. So in that part, these countries differ. Thank you, Sheru. Today, actually, I've learned that you speak around 12 words per second. It's incredible how you do that. Wow. Thank you. I don't know. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you like it, please give us a comment and subscribe our channel. See you in next video.